Thank you, and uh, good afternoon. Um, as a region, as a state, uh, as a country, the entire world has been on uh, a really difficult journey uh, since February. We've had uh, progress, we've had setbacks. Uh, today certainly represents a setback for a region, but I think in a way it represents a, a reset for us. Uh, it is natural uh, that as you go through these things and you see case counts decline, uh, that we collectively lose our focus a little bit uh, because we see those setbacks uh, or we see that progress and it can lull us into some sense of complacency. Uh, but unfortunately, COVID-19 uh, doesn't get complacent, it doesn't get fatigued, it doesn't get tired. Uh, it continues to spread. Uh, and although we do have encouraging news on the prospects for a vaccine and what may be coming, the reality is we still have to get from here uh, to that unknown point uh, at which that vaccine is not only available but is widely available. And along that journey from here to there, we are going to have to recommit ourselves and refocus our efforts uh, to try and slow the spread, uh, to bring our case count down uh, and to get us back in a, a more stable position uh, where we're, we are not seeing increases. Uh, we went through the evolution of living on the precipice of red to purple, uh, but ultimately the increasing cases over the preceding month have finally caught up to, up to us. Uh, our unadjusted case rate jumping from seven to 10 uh, even with the incredible effort we've done around testing, the adjustment factor only bringing us down to 8.9, uh, which is far in excess of where we need to be. It's not just cases that are increasing. We're also seeing an increase in hospitalizations, uh, and we're seeing an increase in our health equity metric, and that precipitates today's movement uh, into the higher purple tier. Uh, even though we have hit the purple tier, those businesses that will be impacted, and Dr. Wooten uh, will go through what those are, uh, will not see an immediate impact. Uh, there is a, a three-day period of time. They will be able to operate until Friday night, uh, and then beginning Saturday morning at midnight, uh, we will see uh, those restrictions go into place. But I think it's vitally important that we point out that the spread is not just in the handful of entities that are gonna see additional restrictions. The spread is countywide. The spread is industry-wide. The spread is community-wide. Uh, the spread is happening in every sector and every zip code and every part of our community, which means every single one of us, not just those businesses impacted by the purple tier, we all have to come together and refocus and resharpen our efforts uh, around doing the things that we know will slow the spread. Things like utilizing a face mask, avoiding large indoor gatherings, physically distancing from non-household members, and washing our hands are the things that we may grow tired of doing, but they're the only tried and true things we know that can contain the spread, lower the case count, uh, and get us back in a strong position. And now we all have to recommit ourselves to those actions. Uh, you know, while we may feel uh, in some part, uh, you know, a sense of, of failure as a county, the simple reality is COVID spreading everywhere. There are 11 counties in California alone that are moving into more restrictive tiers today. Additionally, there are many states that are in much more significantly worse situations than we are, along with other countries around the world. And so now our challenge before us is to come together, do what we have done twice before, lower these case counts, refocus our energies, and get these back on track. We also have learned a lot throughout COVID, going back to February, and one of the most important lessons that's been learned is that you have to take action before it is painfully obvious and clear that you must. The reality is we have not overwhelmed our healthcare system capacity today. And many will say, why don't you wait? And so you see not just an increase in hospitalization, which we're seeing, but a significant increase in hospitalization. And the simple reality is, is that understanding exponential growth and understanding the almost three week delay between an increase in cases and an increase in hospitalization tells you that if you take that approach, you will have the potential of overwhelming your healthcare system with nothing you can do about it. Texas is a case study in what not to do a state that decided to tie uh, its progress in reopenings to hospitalizations is now a state that has areas that are overwhelming their healthcare system capacity. And we know that cases lead to hospitalizations, hospitalizations tend to lead to death. And so you often have to take action before it is out of control and before uh, you are in a position where there is very little you can do about it. Um, and that is the cautionary approach that we simply have to do as a region. We also know and have learned that slowing the spread of COVID is like turning an aircraft carrier. It's not a jet ski. It doesn't turn on a dime. We're not gonna have the new restrictions go in place uh, Friday night and wake up Saturday and Sunday and see decreases in cases. 
Uh, the spread is out there and it is growing and even with a sharpened focus on all of the efforts we're going to do around enforcement and stepping up our actions, it is going to take time. Uh, we are likely to see cases continue to increase uh, over the course of the next week to perhaps two weeks uh, as we try to wrestle the spread and transmission of this virus, hopefully reaching a plateau and then beginning to see the gradual descent that we need uh, in order to advance back in the tiered structure. And so we ask for everyone's vigilance, we ask for everyone's continued effort, and just know the actions that we take beginning today will pay dividends and will have the impact of not only slowing the spread and saving lives, but getting us in a better position to reopen sections of our economy. But it is going to take us a little bit of time. In addition to what we're doing around moving into the purple tier, uh, we are working with cities and law enforcement asking for them to increase their enforcement. Uh, Dr. Wooten, our public health officer, sent a letter to mayors, city managers, and chiefs, chief law enforcement officers of every jurisdiction in San Diego asking for them to step up enforcement efforts uh, around egregious violators and violations of the public health order. Uh, there are only so many things that we can do as a county in terms of putting in place guidelines. Uh, there has to be proper enforcement uh, of those in order to slow the spread and not hold back our entire region. And we certainly hope uh, to have uh, increased efforts uh, around enforcement. We also, as a county, are going to be sending 40,000 masks to law enforcement agencies throughout San Diego County. And our ask to these agencies is to please put them with the officers who are out on patrol. And if you see an individual without a mask, please stop them and offer them a mask. Explain it's not only in our public health interest, it's in our public health order, uh, and we need everyone to do it. We know widespread utilization of face coverings along with avoiding large indoor gatherings are some of the most effective things that we can do, and so we will do that. We are also in the process of sending a letter to our travel and tourism industry, including our hotels and companies like Airbnb, asking for their vigilance and their cooperation in ensuring that we are not having uh, indoor gatherings that are inconsistent with the public health orders, as these have the potential to become super spreading events uh, and just a few of these can have a significant impact on what we're doing as a region. I also wanted to share with you uh, the county complaint line uh, is staffed, is available. That number is 858-694-2900. Individuals can also email safe reopening compliance team at sdcounty.ca.gov. Uh, we have staff standing by to be able to move more swiftly uh, to respond to entities and individuals that are violating public health orders to ensure they understand from an education standpoint uh, what the requirements are and what the expectations are, and then to be in a position, if necessary, to issue public health order cease and desist or potential public health closure notices. No one wants to be punitive. No one wants any business or any entity to be closed at all. But the simple reality is we are now faced with an increase in spread and transmission uh, that threatens our community. And it also, if it is not something we get under control, is something that could tip us into uh, more severe actions. And we want to slow the spread. We want to we want to slow the spread. We want to see those case numbers come down. We don't want to see continued upward transmission, uh, which would have the potential to require uh, much more severe measures to try and contain the spread. We don't want that. Let's all come together. Let's slow, slow the spread, uh, and let's figure out how we can uh, move forward together. Today we celebrate the uh, 245th birthday at the United States Marine Corps. Tomorrow we celebrate Veterans Day. Uh, on behalf of our county, we want to thank every veteran from every branch of service for what they do. In observance of Veterans Day, county offices will be closed Wednesday, uh, but we are opening a new testing site in Vista uh, with the capacity to test up to 500 people daily. Uh, this now, we have now more than 50 sites uh, across the county. This new North County site uh, at the Linda Rhodes Community Center is open to everyone in San Diego County, but our Office of Military and Veterans Affairs have been working closely with the VFW, the American Legion Post, the VA, hospital VA regional offices, as well as 164 different veteran coalition and support organizations uh, to help get the word out uh, to uh, make this available, uh, be available every day, but in particular on Veterans Day. Uh, we're hoping to see a, a large turnout of individuals uh, who have uh, the opportunity to, uh, to, to go get tested. Uh, before we get into our daily charts, just as we head into Veterans Day tomorrow, uh, it is a day that we, we honor service, uh, the notion that you put your energy and your efforts around actions that help other folks. Uh, we honor the concept of sacrifice, 
uh, individuals who are willing to sacrifice their own well-being out of a desire to protect uh, or serve others. Uh, in periods of difficulty like we're in right now, it's times that call on our entire community, uh, every single one of us, uh, to bring that same spirit of service and sacrifice. Folks are being asked to sacrifice the things that they enjoy doing most. Uh, they're being asked to sacrifice their, their social activities, where they would normally go, who they would normally be around, out of an effort to protect the entirety of our community. Uh, our businesses uh, are being forced to sacrifice. Uh, their operations, and these are businesses that when they were formed and started never dreamt of a day or imagined a scenario or situation where they would have limitations placed on uh, doing what they were founded to do. And so in that same spirit of service and sacrifices, we all come together uh, to tighten up and focus everything we're doing to protect lives. Uh, I think we have an opportunity in the, in the coming weeks uh, to also uh, reach out to those businesses that are most impacted and do what we can to help them. If you have the financial ability to maintain your gym membership, even though you may not be going, please do, because those gym owners are hurting and they're struggling. And that is something that we can all do to support one another. Even though heading into the weekend, restaurants will be closed for indoor dining, they're available for takeout. It is a great time if you have the ability to go out and patronize and try and support these restaurants that, again, are going to go through a very difficult and trying time. And just as we come together as a community to support our healthcare professionals, or our schools, uh, or our seniors who are isolated, uh, we need to come together as best we can to try and support one another and recognize that no one has any desire uh, to issue fines or penalties or be punitive with what we're doing. Uh, we're doing the best in a very difficult situation where we face a series of bad choices and we're trying to make the choices that can guide our region through this most responsibly and most safely. And we ask for everyone's help and support as we do that.